was the leader of this movement, and he had strung together a whole ser series of communities. They call them the Pueblos Manos, or the joined communities in this, in this area. And I think we saw a school, we saw a hospital, we saw a community center. They planted orchards. They were growing avocados. Uh, they were growing flowers for exports. And these were all things uh, that were done in a community that was completely abandoned by the development planners, the big people from Mexico City who never had gone there. Uh, and most of the able-bodied males in the community had left. Uh, so it was very inspiring, I think, to all of the people. And I wanted to share that story with you because just today, this morning, I got an email from a colleague of mine uh, in Mexico, and she and her uh, her colleagues there have nominated this teacher, this Maestro Mecenas, for a prize for the best social justice leader, very much what we're talking about here, that is offered by a Mexican foundation, called the Fundación Compartir. And in that uh, prize, there is a description of who would be the best candidates for the prize. And they say that the qualifications for this prize, for the best social leader, are, are to begin, are those people that have skills to direct, to orient, to strengthen collective activities with a talent to mo mobilize human and institutional resources and with the capacity to give solutions to concrete problems. Uh, and I thought this was so wonderful that he had been nominated for the prize, we were able to support him. And what this particular visionary leader was able to do by mobilizing others, to getting them to, uh, you know, Bob Dylan, our, one of our heroes, used to say, uh, you can be in my dream if I can be in yours. And there was a feeling that he had, he had certainly been able to do this, but not at the abstract level, at a very concrete level, thinking about activities that would improve the livelihoods. So I wanted to bring that story to you because, uh, and there are many others around the world, but in, in part so you know that uh, a, a, a region that is not represented here, which is also part of the IFP extended family, is thinking very much along uh, similar lines. Let me just say a few words about what I, and I have a number of colleagues here, and we'll certainly be discussing this as we go forward, what, what we take away from an event like this. And, let me just remind you that, that our job as the custodians of uh, the Ford Foundation funds and is to identify what are the best, most effective way to use these resources to achieve the goals of the program. It's a, it's a fairly simple task, but it has a lot of moving parts to it. Uh, and so as we sat through the discussions and had the privilege of talking with all of you, that's what we were thinking about. And it seems to me that I would take away kind of three major achievements of this meeting uh, that adds to our stock of knowledge and that we will immediately feed back into our program. First of all, it seemed to me that the, the kind of debate and discussion that we had about all the key terms uh, as were actually reflected in the title of the conference responding to the challenges of leader social, leadership, social justice, and development in a complex world. That pretty much sums it up. Uh, and uh, I think that so many, to hear so many varied and intelligent and creative responses to the complexities of, defi of, of defining virtually every single word in that type. And I was thinking about how uh, I remember uh, Professor Jill said the other day that defining terms was kind of the key spot to start. And I thought about uh, well, what do we mean by knowledge? Dr. Ari has uh, contrasted that to wisdom. How do we get from one to another? And what do we mean by leadership anyway? You know, when uh, Professor Holcomb asked for examples of leadership, uh, we had three people who all turn up in every single part of the world. So they do clearly embody characteristics that are universally recognized. But, as she pointed out, they were, they were all males and they were all in the, in the public political sphere. And we know that there are so many forms of leadership in the public sphere, and the roles that women can play uh, in the private sphere and the family, for example. So, I'm 
understandings of uh, what we mean by knowledge